Hello everyone, welcome back to a new episode of Signalis. Last time we left off, we got two new keys, the Eagle Key and the Library Key. And we also got some more uh, <coughs> information about uh, our model and uh, what we're doing here and that we're an enigma and all of that jazz. So that's cool. So I think I'm going to make my way to the piano room. Because we need to get to the library, and uh, also the Eagle Key is um, on floor 8, I believe, as well. So we definitely, definitely need to get to the piano room and hang out over there. Um, you are tall. Can you just walk past for a second? There you go. Mm-hmm. Who's a good giant? Who's a good giant? You are. Yes, you are. Okay, there down still that's right good because yeah i thermited them okay so let's go ahead and hit this up i only have two spaces in my inventory but <clears throat> but these keys are gonna get used up so i think we should be good here so i need to go over here take the elevator down a floor and then uh we will be good you're getting back up, that's annoying, but uh, it's doable. Uh, go down the elevator, please. Yeah, it's like my character gets turned around sometimes, probably because I move my mouse, and then if I'm not actually facing the thing, I can't click on it. Uh, and that causes some issues sometimes. Alrighty, so library key, go ahead and use that. We still have the star map we haven't done anything with either. Oh hey, there's um, someone in here. Uh, turn that way, please. Ah, okay, we're gonna hear, we're gonna learn more about you. Replica overview, uh, MNHR. So we, we already got the replica known issues, uh, document with you, but we haven't actually had the overview with you. Mina, mining nuclear tech, high security replica Mina. Generation 3 industrial, uh, specialist, biomechanical with high security reinforced armor plated servo shell. Yep, I am deeply acquainted with that. When it comes to dangerous cargo, heavy machinery, and hazardous environments, no other model rivals the MNHR units with their high security power armor bodies. Even in lethal radiation under crushing pressure and in zero G, they keep their calm demeanor and show exemplary teamwork. Despite their hulking bodies, underneath their face shields, a standard Generation 3 cranial construction can be found, making maintenance and social interfacing as easy as with any other replica. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that's and that's what we shot when the face shield came down. Please note that the MNHR neural pattern is not suited for combat use. For combat applications, the SAPR variant should be used, which employs a combat-capable persona in the same frame. For more information, see the Schwer Antipanzer Replica Schnapper. Okay, so that one's... Yeah, you weren't actually intended for combat use. I'm guessing I'm going to have to fight the SAPR variant. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm guessing the fact that you weren't and weren't suited for combat use is probably one of the main reasons we were even able to defeat you. Because, yeah, you were attacking me, but there were ways to take you down because you had to lower your face shield every bit. But the one that's intended for combat, I wonder... I wonder if the one intended for combat would be like a, uh... Would be like a tyrant. In that... Because they're in the same incredibly resistant armor except their face shield just may never come down so it may be like a tyrant where i just have to run from it basically uh a tyrant in um resident evil that is you mostly just want to evade them i mean you can attack the tyrants like nemesis and uh mr x and stuff but uh it's not recommended considering you're mostly just wasting ammo Ah, and this is the replica known issues about the Colibri. These are the um, ones that are the best uh, bioresonance uh, ones. Previous experience with this model, insight into the irregularities. Yep, so. Great care should be given to Colibris. Their n neural patterns are very unstable, and their bioresonance module makes them very susceptible to influence from others. Like most bioresonant individuals, Colibris will often subconsciously create an emotional feedback loop, imitating and then broadcasting the emotion of those around them, acting as a sort of amplifier. While they are trained to recognize and disengage this behavior, already unstable units can sometimes spiral into persona degradation. 
Due to their bioresonant connection, neural pattern development and colorize varies less than in other models. Constant exchange of memories and emotions between units of a catter acts as a safety net that buffers extreme changes. Yeah. So, the, you're, you're more susceptible to um, persona degradation, but the fact that you're basically a hive mind means all of the other members of the hive mind kind of keep you in check. However, once a majority of units in a cat are degrade, they will drag remaining units down with them. Because of this, it is important to decommission Colibri units instantly when they begin to degrade. For Persona Stabilization, Colibri should have access to a well-stocked library. Aha, uh -huh. so that must be what you are. You must be one of the, uh, Colibris. Colibris. Okay. Cool. Hi. Yep. Who are you? You're not one of our staff. Yep, I'm sure not. I'm here. I'm special. The others, they've changed. You no longer seeing in unison. I used to be able to see into their minds. We were as one. Together we guided them all. But now, I can't understand their thoughts anymore. Never been so alone before. They're still together and I am here outside and they won't let me in. That must be horrible to be a part of a hive mind for effectively your whole life and then you get shut out because they all go nuts. I cannot stand their song anymore. This is the only place where I don't have to hear them. This is the only place I'm safe. Yeah, because you like the library. Can't go on like this. I wish I had become like the others too. At least then I wouldn't be alone. Oh, this is depressing. I hate this. I'm sorry, friend. I'm really, really sorry. That is very, very awful. You've been separated from your hive mind. Um... And just for me to, uh, remind myself... The, uh, give me down Adler, da -da 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 -da. memories of, yeah, there's that one. What's the, the one I want to, yeah, yeah, Colibri in the management office. So yeah, they're the ones that, um, change my radio because of their bioresonance abilities. That's why there's also usually a bunch of them, uh, or no, there's not a bunch of them together. They just like make clones appear, probably because they're, uh, bioresonating with me to make me hallucinate and stuff. Alright, so, alignment errors use manual controls. Oh. Obstacle detected system orientation. Oh. Oh, we want that. We want that, I think. It's the only one that looks different, so... Oh no, this is like a moving block puzzle, I think. Oh, that's totally what this is. Okay, well... Kinda seeing my way, uh, through here, and if I go up... Ah, uh, I can't stop, so I gotta stop- oh wait, no, 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 this is right. Up, right, and then up, yes, there we go, and we got the king in yellow again. The, uh, the Lovecraft, or the, the pre-Lovecraft book. <laughs> Pick up the astrolabe. Okay, yeah, and we're probably gonna use the astrolabe at the, uh, the, like, little galaxy map. Yep, they certainly do like their king in yellow here. Certainly do like their king in yellow here. It was so cool to find out about that because I had heard of the king in yellow a little bit before, but um, I had never actually done like a deep dive on it, so it was cool to uh, actually do a deep dive and learn more about it. It is neat. It is very, very neat that Lovecraft even had inspirations from uh, other writers and stuff like that. Okay. I mean, everyone's inspired by something, right? But you, uh, hear about this writer. I forget the name of the writer of The King in Yellow. I want to say it was like... Why, why do I have Paxton in my head? I don't know why I have Paxton in my head. It could be any number of things. But, um, yeah. Just, um... God, I forgot where I was going with that. But it's, it's interesting to see, for sure. A strange clockwork-like dial mechanism with astronomical symbols on the front. Can't use this here. Okay. And I have a picture of this, right? I must have to use this somewhere else, but this is where we get the answer to it, yeah? Because I think I took a picture of this on my phone. Um, oh god, I, I went to the zoo yesterday, so I have pictures of red pandas and serballs. Um... But we we gotta we gotta get back to my uh my other thing. 
there it is. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do have a picture of this. Okay, and we can't interact with this or anything. So, um, yeah, I'm guessing what we do is this is some sort of key to a locking mechanism. And we turn the bits to have it, um, you know, line up correctly. Yeah. Guessing that's what happens. And we gotta put it, we gotta put it somewhere, so... Maybe the eagle room, even? That's one of the last places we need to go, so let's, let's get out of here. So, what's my inventory looking like? My inventory is full. Um, that's not ideal. The eagle key is going to open my inventory up a little bit, and if I take some damage in one of these rooms, I can pop that repair patch. Um, to free up a little bit of inventory space as well. Because uh, I think there's two enemies in here. Yes, there are. And they always notice me right about now. Yeah. So, through there. And then... That... Is the eagle room. Yeah, it even shows it on the door. So... Uh, don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. Go, go in the door. Thank you. Whew. Almost did that thing again. Oh, we need uh, the flashlight in here. Use. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. And yeah, this is the... The Eagle Door. And I read this. Yeah, this is the overview for Adler. We can refresh ourselves on you. Yeah. Um, Adler unit can manage and oversee all administrative tasks for an entire facility, freeing other operational command units to focus. Yeah, you're like the the secretary, basically. Designed for work as a direct counterpart to the Falk, serving as head adjutant by taking necessary paperwork and calculations. Yeah. Alright, use the Eagle key. And now we are in here. Beautiful. What do we got? Adler's Diary. Ooh, seven pages. I have been fascinated by a peculiar piece of furniture I discovered in storage. A strange box with a removable dial in the front that was confiscated from a worker some time ago. I was instantly drawn to it, though I'm not sure why. When I put my ear on the mechanism, I can hear it faintly clicking like a clock. Piece of furniture discovered in storage. Removable dial. That sounds like what I have. The, uh... Uh, uh, astrolabe. Hmm. Okay. Without Co uh, Colobri's help, it has become much harder to coordinate the logistics, Catter. If there is anything good to say about that woman, it is how she knows how to make others respect her orders. Despite her minuscule stature, I want to see her today, but her room is still locked. I had a dream tonight. Another memory of my Gestalt life, I believe. I was wearing my uniform. There was a young woman, her hair white as snow. Now I was conducting some sort of test. I had a deck of cards with astronomical symbols of them and asked her to guess the planet on the card I was holding. Yeah, memories of your guest alt life. So yeah, we do have memories of our, uh, the, the, um, what do they call it? They call it, like, the, uh, the neuro wave, the neuro length that, um, the replicas are based off of because we're based off of a real human. And yeah, we keep hearing about this young woman, hair white as snow, and we keep seeing it as well, and I imagine you're what's making people go nuts? I was playing with that mechanical lockbox again, of which I am sh now sure is some kind of astronomical calendar, yeah. When I suddenly remembered a conversation I had with another replica when I was inspecting the mining site. However, it was clearly a model I have never seen before. Okay. Remembered a conversation I had with another replica when I was inspecting the mining site. Yeah, so this is talking about us, the LSTR. Model I've never seen before, some type of engineer with an orange chest piece. In my memory, she was just another member of our staff, but no such replica was ever stationed on Sierpinski. Replica memory is not the most reliable, they say, but never before have I experienced such a strange phenomenon. Yeah, and this is specifically the diary that the other note talks about, uh, the Colibri saying, like, I don't trust Adler. The little enigma of that box can only distract me from the chaos around me for so long. All the box contained was a small notebook, which all pages turned out to be blank. Has been miserable since our beloved commander has fallen ill. I long for her stern guidance, that overwhelming authority in which she bathes a room. Yeah, I mean they said you're in you're in danger if you don't have the commander around, because you you're you're very dependent on your commander. That was one of the things about your model. Yeah, and all the box contained was a small notebook, and all the pages turned out to be blank. Interesting. Is it something you can only see if you can see through the fold? 
More sick, making my work ever harder. How are we meant to shoulder this workload with no reinforcements? My only consolation is that, as our protector staff decreases, so does the workforce we oversee. While more and more replica end up in the hospital wing, Gestalt workers seem to succumb much too fast for any attempts at treatment. Yeah, so this disease, like, like we've been over before, the Gestalt just die immediately because they're organic, but we're like half or organic, or just have like less organic bits, so it doesn't hit us as quickly. Another diary filled, for no benefit but my own satisfaction. I've not ordered a new one yet, since I spent my saved ration marks on that marvelous looking fountain pen, but I guess I'll make use of that notebook. Yeah, and there must be something bad going on with that notebook if you write in it. It's the death note! Hmm, okay. So yeah, you, you ran out of your diary, and Adler's it recommended that you give them a diary as a fetish object, I believe, so that they could write and collect their thoughts. So you needed a new diary, couldn't afford it, so you used the notebook that you found in the locked box. And I'm guessing that made bad things happen. Okay, and this is where this goes. Yeah. Anything else hanging out around here? Another note. Here we go, the replica overview for me. Land Surveys, Ship Technician Replica, Magpie. Generation 5 Cosmo Pioneer Specialist. Biomechanical with Carbon Fiber Reinforced Shell and Titanium Skeleton. Versatile Combat Engineer Unit primarily designed for orbital service. These tough and stoic loners are best suited as specialist sappers and scouts. Their technical knowledge and combat capabilities make these units true survivalists, especially within their iconic white and blue heavy combat configuration which sports bullet-resistant armor plating on their chest and forearms. White and blue heavy combat configuration. I haven't seen that. I hope I get that at some point. Since the original neural pattern for this unit was lost with the destruction of the central neural archive on Veneta, new LSTR units have been produced based on a decommissioned unit from the Penrose program. Interesting. So they lost the original neural pattern when uh, the Neural Archive on Veneta, which is that area that I mentioned looked like the Halo Towers. We have like a little poster for it. When that was destroyed, yeah, the new units were based off of a decommissioned one. And yeah, we have a heavy combat configuration. When do I get that? And it makes sense. It's so funny because it says these units are true survivalists while I'm playing a survival horror game. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that checks out. Alrighty, so... What do we gotta do here? Use the astrolabe? Yes. Now, I need that picture on my phone. So... Hmm. Okay, so I'm looking here. Rot front. Buyan Veneta Kitez. Heimat. Heimat has like a star beside it. Huh, so... Yeah. Hmm. Not totally sure what I'm supposed to get. I can't move the outer one. I can't move the outer one at all. So, okay, so we must be looking at, based off of the position of where this is, which appears to be Hamut, I need to bring the other rings in order here. So based off of where Hamut is right now, um, I think Rot Front, which is this, if it's up here, Rot Front should be down here. Probably. I think that's correct. And then we have this one, which the next tier after Hamut is uh, Kitez. Yeah, um, if that's the case, then that should be, like, this way. And then this one should be this way. No, okay, that's not correct. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like the reason this one doesn't move is so that I can kind of... put things into perspective here. Because right here is the main planet at the center. Hmm. Yeah. Because there's one, two, three. So yeah, that should be correct. These two line up 
as I would expect here. Or maybe it wants... There's that, and then that's Rot Front. So maybe they, maybe these two, maybe Kitez and Veneta. Yeah, maybe, maybe it wants me to do Bouillon instead. And if uh, it means Bouillon, yeah, I think this is Bouillon. That means it would be complete opposite from here. No? Hmm. Ah, we got clipped. Damn. Just barely. Yeah, running back, running back and forth is gonna is gonna be a pain for this. So let's get another look here. Um, so yeah, see this, the like star. Yeah, that's like the focal point that I need to orient everything else with, and that's Hamet, home of the New Nations government. Yeah. So Kitez, the Red Desert, the Imperial fleet can only hold it for so long. The ocean world ravaged by war, and. Home of the Imperial Palace, floating above the poisonous clouds. Okay, so I'm going to take uh, a picture once uh, Hamet gets back towards like the top, so I know the orientation of the rest of these things, and then we'll go from there. Ah, there we go. Okay, so I think I was just barely off um, the last time. Yeah, so it, I, I think I had it like right here. It should have been like right there. So I was just I was just a little bit off, but uh, I had the right idea. So yeah, uh, like Kitez um, is right here. I think that's Kitez that it wants me to show there, or Veneta. And then this one is Buyan, the most uh, the closest moon to our uh, main planet here. And then that is obviously Rotfront because that's the uh, only other like big planet. And then Hamut is up here. So. Yeah, okay, that wasn't so bad. Um, I was just barely off last time. The administrator's key. And here's the diary. The crazy diary. Started yet another diary, how time flies. The work is dull and monotonous as ever in Sierpinski, but a bright light illuminates my day. Today, I was invited to a meeting by Commander Falk, and she was as magnificent as ever. Another day passes. During my meeting with the Commander today, I felt the strangest sensation of familiarity as I sat with her. Sadly, our meeting was interrupted by an unexpected power outage. I'm feeling strangely paranoid these days. Never before have I felt so strongly the sensation of deja vu as I have these past few days. When I checked the pages of my diary today, I noticed that for some inexplicable reason, I seem to have dated my previous entries with today's date. What an embarrassing mistake. Every day feels a bit like I've lived it before, and even stronger is the sensation that something is somehow just slightly out of place. Yeah, you're putting the same- you're reliving the same day constantly, and are you also making everyone else do that? Why is my diary filled with entries I cannot recall writing? Why are they all dated to today? Has the loss of my beloved commander finally gotten to my mind? Am I going insane? Fear what will happen to me if anyone finds out. I am alone in this. If they discover my notes, I'll be decommissioned too. Something is wrong, I can feel it. Is this really madness? When I read the pages of my diary, I recall events that never happened. A yesterday that never was, yet it feels as real as the one I already experienced. This cannot merely be a defect of my mind. It's, yeah, it's the, it's the diary. Feels as though in this room I peer into another version of reality. How? I do not know. Perhaps I too have become sick like the others without realizing, but I will not succumb. Slow accumulation of reproduction errors, a gradual corruption of information, a story misremembered slowly morphing with each retelling, like genetic material mutating and evolving, like the replica mind copied over and over from an aging template. Yeah, each time it's different slightly than the last, and eventually it's like a game of telephone. Eventually you're going to get to the point where it doesn't even look the same as uh, what it's originally did. I do not know, but I will find out. The answer lies below, I can feel it. Someone or something calls me from there, in the mine. Interesting, so you've been having like a Groundhog Day thing, or Happy Death Day, where you kind of relive the same day over and over again. And it's slightly, it changes slightly, that your memory of the events changes slightly every time, and you're wondering if you're going nuts, but now you feel that it's the mines calling to you, yeah. Yeah, the marker. It's the marker from Dead Space calling to you. 
Um, well, there's nothing else to do here. Uh, we are done now, so I just take the administrator key and go down into the mines. That is our next area. So, yeah. We are, uh, we are good to go. Um, let me go ahead and turn this flashlight off, because I don't want these dorks to notice me as soon as I walk out here. Uh, hello. Um, I don't have, uh, I do not have a stun, um, stun thing on me. Can you two, like, reset? Because I could really, I really need to get over there. There we go. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Alright, now we run. Oh god, they sprinting. Uh, get in the door, please. Thank you. Okay. Alrighty, we can get, uh, we can get out of here now. So let's go all the way up the stairs for right now so we can hit our handy dandy save room. And I can drop some things off. And we are going to be entering a uh, new area. So let's drop the uh, repair patch. Let's drop the repair spray. The admin key we have now. Um, I still haven't used the stupid photo module. Six visual memories. Incredibly outdated, but it might still be useful. I was thinking this would be used for a puzzle. I wonder if I can, like, record the memory of the various replicas that I've seen? I don't know. And then we have the pillar plate of eternity. Not pillar of eternity. That's a... Pillars of eternity is a game. Series. <laughs> um, alright, so we're pretty much done here. Um, I think I will go ahead and end this episode off, because I do still have to get this video up today, but, um, next time we will go check out the mineshaft access, so. Hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you next time for some more.